Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. You know those solar-powered garden lights that turn on when it gets dark? There's a good chance that they use a light-dependent resistor, or LDR, and a comparator to detect the light level and turn on the LED when it gets dark enough. The light-controlled light circuit could look something like this. The light-dependent resistor has a negative light coefficient, so when it gets darker, the resistance goes up. And as the resistance goes up, the voltage at the inverting terminal will go down, and at some point the voltage will be lower than the reference voltage applied here at the non-inverting terminal. When this happens, the output will go to VDD, and the LED will turn on. Now imagine when the inverting terminal voltage is really close to the voltage of the reference, and there's a leaf above the LDR that's moving around with the wind, sometimes shading it, sometimes not. So there's a good chance that the voltage at the inverting terminal will move up and down above and below the reference voltage, causing the light to turn on and off rapidly. This could get kind of annoying, but there is a way to fix this. And that's by adding a feedback resistance from the output to the reference voltage at the non-inverting terminal. What this does is create two different reference voltages, one for when the output is at VDD and one for when the output is at zero. VREF when the output is zero volts is still a voltage divider like it is with a standard comparator, but based on R1 in series with a parallel combination of the feedback resistor and R2. So this circuit over here on the left occurs when the voltage at the output here is at zero volts. So we get this equivalent circuit with a VREF equal to VDD times that parallel combination of R2 and the feedback resistance divided by R1 plus that parallel combination of R2 and the feedback resistance. When the output is at VDD, we get an equivalent circuit that looks something like this. Also still a voltage divider, but based on R2 in series with a parallel combination of the feedback resistor and R1. And so in this case, the equation for the voltage reference is VDD times R2 over the series resistance of R2 plus R1 in parallel with that feedback resistance. So now given some actual values for VDD and the resistors, we can do some calculations to determine the two different reference voltage points. So the one on the left here is when the output voltage is equal to 5 volts. And what we get for the reference voltage then is 5 volts times 10 kilo ohms divided by 10 kilo ohms plus this parallel combination of the 10 kilo ohm and the 100 kilo ohm resistor. So when the output voltage is 5 volts, the reference voltage will be 2.62 volts. And when the output voltage is at zero volts, we get a reference that's equal to five volts times this parallel combination of 10K and 100K divided by 10K plus that parallel combination again. So when the output voltage is at zero volts, the reference will become 2.38 volts. So let's see how these switching reference voltages affect the operation of the circuit. So let's assume that the sun is out and the inverting pin voltage is close to 5 volts. This means that the output voltage will be at 0, and the reference voltage at the non-inverting pin will be at 2.38 volts. Now as the sun starts to set, the LDR resistance increases, and so the voltage at the inverting pin begins to drop. And as soon as the voltage drops below the 2.38 volt reference point, the output voltage will switch from 0 volts to 5 volts. The LED will turn on, and when the output voltage switches, the reference point also switches to 2.62 volts. Now even if there is some fluctuation around that 2.38 volt reference point, we're not getting above the 2.62 volts that's the new threshold, so the output will remain on. And when the sun rises again, the inverting pin voltage rises. And as soon as it is above that 2.62 volts again, the output drops back to zero volts, the light goes off, and the reference also drops to 2.38 volts. And again, if the light level fluctuates a little bit around 2.62 volts, the light will not flicker on and off because the reference point has changed. So the bottom line is, when a change at the output of the op-amp is triggered, the reference point changes too, so that small fluctuations around the original reference point don't cause future changes. And this is called hysteresis. And this kind of circuit, where you design in some hysteresis for a comparator, is called a Schmidt trigger. And this circuit here is a Schmidt trigger designed to use when you have a comparator that uses a single power supply.
But lots of comparator circuits use a dual power supply, and arguably this dual supply Schmidt trigger circuit is a bit simpler since you only need the positive feedback resistor coming from the output. You don't need the third resistor connected to the positive power supply. This circuit will also have an upper threshold and a lower threshold. The calculation for this is slightly easier than with the single supply Schmidt trigger. So you can see the calculations are very similar for this dual power supply as they were for the single power supply, except the voltages that we care about, the voltages at the output are going to be switching between a positive value and a negative value, but we're still using a voltage divider network, this time with just two resistors instead of three. So if the feedback resistor is 100 kilo ohms and R1 is 10 kilo ohms and the power supply is plus minus 10 volts, we get an upper trigger point or an upper threshold point of 10 times 10 over 10 plus 100. 0.91 volts, and a lower trigger point of negative 10 times 10 over 10 plus 100 equals negative 0.91 volts. So you can see the two different thresholds here equally spaced around 0 volts. So let's assume that Vn starts low, something lower than both of the thresholds. So let's say somewhere around there. And this means that Vout is at 10 volts, and Vref is at 0.91 volts. Now if Vn starts to increase, Nothing's going to happen until it crosses the 0.91 volt threshold. And then at that point, the output voltage is going to switch from the 10 volts down to minus 10 volts. And when that happens, the reference will switch from 0.91 volts down to negative 0.91 volts. And here again, this can fluctuate around the 0.91 volt threshold but it's not going to make any changes because the threshold has switched to the negative 0.91 volt point. Now if this Vn drops off rapidly here, nothing's going to happen when it crosses the 0.91 volt threshold. The output will only change when the input drops below the negative 0.91 volt threshold. And right at that point, the input is going to, the output I should say, is going to switch from minus 10 back up to plus 10 volts and the reference will switch from minus 0.91 to 0.91 volts. And if you need more hysteresis, you could decrease the feedback resistance. If you need less hysteresis, you can increase the feedback resistance. And that's the basics of Schmidt triggers and using them to get some hysteresis so the output voltage doesn't wildly fluctuate if the input is rapidly changing around a threshold voltage. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications. You can also check out my website, which has all sorts of content related to electrical and electronic circuits, and you can find a link to that in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and see you soon.